Welcome to another episode of The U. My name is Robert Whitaker. Today, I'm going to teach you what PyATS parsers are and how to use them. PyATS parsers are simply awesome. To appreciate the power of PyATS parsers, we first need to understand what data structures are. Simply put, a data structure is when we organize and format our data. The data can then easily be retrieved by a computer. Next, let's go through a step-by-step -step example so we can understand data structures. Here we have the output of a show command, and this output is formatted and organized in a way so it can easily be read by humans. Notice the output uses spaces and indentation. It even has tables with some columns and rows. So let's give this a try. I want you to use your human logic. I want you to look for the IP address of the BGP neighbor of this router. Feel free to pause the video to see if you can find it. The BGP neighbor is 2222. And so show command outputs are designed to be easily read and processed by humans, but this kind of data cannot so easily be read and processed by a computer. To a computer, the data looks like just a bunch of random text. A computer is not able to decipher what all these spaces, indentations, what these columns and rows actually mean. In fact, it would be a very difficult task for me to give a computer instructions to find the IP address of the router's BGP neighbor. Into a computer, the data we just looked at would almost look like what these files on this desk would look like to you. It would be very challenging for me if I had to give you instructions to grab a specific page from a specific file on this desk. Now, it would be much easier for me to give you instructions to retrieve a file if all of our files were meticulously organized into a file cabinet. I could say, hey, the file is in drawer 10, it's in the first folder, and I need the file called Robert's tax form. This is very similar to how computers prefer their data. They prefer their data to be organized in a very specific way. Or I should say, a computer prefers the data to be structured. On the right hand side, this entire output is a Python data structure. If you look carefully at the data, you might notice that the data looks familiar. In fact, it contains similar data that we saw in the BGP show command output that we previously looked at. So we could obtain BGP neighbor info via the show command on the left, or we could obtain BGP neighbor info via the data structure on the right. And we can see the data on the right is highly organized. The data has regular brackets and it has curly brackets in very specific locations. We also have words that are actually separated by colons. And notice there's characters before the colon, they're referred to as keys. And then there's characters after the colons that are referred to as values. Now, because my data is structured in this very specific way, I can now very easily give my computer instructions to retrieve specific pieces of data from within this data structure. For example, if I want my computer to find BGP neighbor uptime, I would instruct my computer to return the value of VRF, VRF1, neighbor, 2222, address family, VPN4 unicast, the uptime key. The computer could then return the value of five days and 21 hours. So hopefully this data structure definition makes a lot more sense now. The data we just looked at is organized in a specific way so it can easily be retrieved by a computer. And so if we want our computers to automate our network, we're going to need to provide our computers data that is structured. And this is where parsers come into play. Parsers transform data from one format to another format. And the cool thing is PyATS has a ton of parsers. In fact, we converted the CLI output on the left to the data structure on the right by using the show BGP all neighbors parser. And if we go to PyATS Genie's website, we can see there are thousands of different parsers for different commands. And if I go back to the top, I can actually search for a specific parser. So I'm gonna search for the show BGP all neighbors parser. And there we go. Once I search that, I can see there's a show BGP all neighbors parser for both the XE and the iOS platforms. In fact, if I pull down this menu, uh, there are a ton of different parsers for different platforms. And notice some of these platforms aren't even made by Cisco. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use these parsers in five simple steps. Step number one, we'll install the NetMiko PyATS and the Genie libraries. Step number two, we'll then write a NetMiko script to run a show command on a router. Step number three, we'll then use the Genie parser in our script to convert show command output to a Python data structure. Step number four, we'll use the pretty print method to print out the data structure and make it human readable. And then finally, step number five, we'll update the script to print out a specific value within the data structure. Now, in order to work with PyATS, you need Linux. If you have a Windows machine, you can actually easily spin up a Linux VM using WSL2. I cover exactly how to do this in this video right here. I'll include a link to this video in the show notes. So let's go into step number one. I'm going to connect into my Ubuntu VM. 
We'll first install the NetMeagle library, which is going to enable us to send show commands to a router. We're going to install it using pip. Next, we'll install PyETS. And then finally, we're going to install Genie, which is going to enable us to use those parsers. Okay, next we're going to move on to step number two. We're going to create a script so we can send show commands to a router. So I'm going to use the code command to create and open a new file called show command py. That file gets opened up in Visual Studio Code. Next, I'm going to copy the code from Cisco U. If you want access to this code, I'll put a link to the code in the show note. I'm then going to paste the code into my script. So this entire script from a very high level, we want to simply send show commands to a router, and then we want to print out the response. Now, if we look at some of the individual lines of code, in line one, we're importing code from the NetMeagle library. We then specify the host name, username, password of the router, and the type of router we want to connect to. In line nine, this is where we connect an SSH into the router, and we store the SSH connection into the R1 variable. And in case you're not familiar with the concept of variables, just think of R1 as a, a special name. It's going to store our SSH connection to the router. What I can then do is later reference that R1 variable name to interact with our router. And that's what I'm doing in line 13. I'm saying, hey, I want to interact with the router and we're going to be sending some commands to that router. And the command that we're going to send is the show version command. So when I run this script, we'll connect to the router and we'll send the show version command. I'm going to use the print function to print out the response from the router. So we save the script and then we go back to the Linux VM and run the script. And here it is. Here's the output of the show version command. Notice the output is very human readable, but it's not very computer readable. And remember, if we want our computers to do automation, our computer prefers to work with data that is structured. And that takes us to step number three. We want to convert the output of the show version command to a data structure using a genie parser. To do that, we simply add the use genie true argument to line 13. We then save the script and we run the script. Boom, there we go. We have a data structure. Notice all these curly brackets and regular brackets. Notice all these keys and values. This is a data structure. This is something my computer can work with. So next we're gonna give Python the appropriate instructions to print out the value of the disk size key. So this is the disk size key. This is its current value. To do this, we need to determine how this disk size key is actually nested within other keys. And for a human, reading through this data structure would be very tedious as everything is smashed together and there's no indentation. So to better read and work with this data structure, we should make it more human readable. And that's going to take us to step number four, where we're going to use pprint, which stands for pretty print, to make this data structure more human readable. So pretty print comes from the rich library. So let's install the rich library. We're then going to go back into our script and import pretty from the rich library. Next, I'm going to update line 14. So instead of doing a regular print, I want to use a pretty print. So I save the script. Let's clear the screen. I'm then going to run the script. Boom, there we go. We have a data structure, the same data structure as before, except this output is indented and much easier for humans to read. And that takes us to step number five, where we're going to update our script to only print out the value of the disk size key. So remember in line 14, I'm printing out this entire data structure. I no longer want to do that. So I'm going to remove the print function and instead of printing the data structure, we're gonna save the entire data structure into the response variable. So again, all this data right here on the left-hand side, we're not printing it out, we're storing all of it inside of this variable name called response. In line 16, I'm now gonna tell my computer to look at the data structure inside of the response variable. Next, I'm gonna give my computer instructions to access the value of the disk size key. To do that, I will tell my computer to go to the version key, then go to the disk key, then to the boot flash key, and then to obtain the value of the disk size key. So I'm gonna copy all these keys and paste them into my script.
So again, I'm telling Python to look at the response variable, which is this entire data structure. I'm telling Python to go to the version key, the disk key, the boot flash key, followed by the disk size key. And we want to return the value of the disk size key which is 5234688, and we wanna store this value into a new variable. So we're gonna store that value into the disk size variable. And then in line 18, we're gonna print out the value of the disk size variable. So here I'm using the print function. I'm using something called an F string. So I wanna print out the string that says the size of the disk is, and then at the end of the string, I want to insert and print out the value of the disk size variable. So I save the script. Now I'm gonna run the script. Boom, there we go. Our script prints out the following message. The size of the disk is 5234688. So to recap, we just converted the show version command output to a data structure, and then we gave our computer appropriate instructions to go through the data structure and print out the value of the disk size key. Very, very cool stuff. And there's a lot of other things we can have Python do with this data structure. So for example, maybe I want to create a script that checks the software version of a router, and then the script can inform the admin if the router needs to be upgraded or not. So I could tell Python to look at the XE version key and look at the value of the XE version key. In this example, this router is on 17092A, and maybe this is the version of software we want our routers to be running. What I can then do within my script is create something called a conditional. Now, just in case you're not familiar with conditionals, a conditional allows your script to take a certain action if a condition is true and possibly take another action if the condition is false. So in our example, I could tell Python, if the XE version key is equal to 17092A, our script should tell the admin that the router does not need to be upgraded. If the router is on a different version, we should inform the admin that the router needs to be upgraded. Now, if you go to u.cisco.com, I created a free lab called a tutorial. I would recommend going through this tutorial right here, working with data structures and network automation scripts. If we go into it, I cover what parsers are. I also cover Python data structures in much more depth. I will include a direct link to this tutorial in the show notes. Also, if you like this video and wanna see more of these videos in the future, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I hope this was useful. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Thank you.